Okay, so next up we've got problem 14. This is the longest collat sequence problem. So this problem, um, first it defines what a collat sequence is, um, or what this particular sequence is. So what you do is you take n, and then if n is even, n is now halved, so you divide it by 2. If n is odd, you times it by 3 and then you add 1. So using those those rules there, um, you generate a sequence. So you start with 13 in this example. Uh, 13 is odd, so you times it by 3, you get 39. Plus 1, you get 40. Now 40 is even, so you half it. 20. 20 is even, so you half it. 10. 10 is even, so you half it. 5. 5 is odd, so you times it by 3 and plus 1. 16. 16 is even, half it, 8 is even, half it, 4 is even, half it, 2 is even, half it, and then when you get to 1, you stop. So the rules are, these two plus if n equals 1, you stop. So the question is, which starting number under 1 million produces the longest chain? So this chain here is uh, 1 long, 2 long, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 long. So it wants to know what's the longest chain under for a starting number under a million. So I'll warn you now, um, this first video will be a brute force-ish method, um, it will solve the problem, hopefully, I'm not too sure on the computation time, but I have ideas for improvements I want to make, so there'll definitely be a part 2 of this and maybe even a part 3 of this one, because there's quite a few interesting things you can do to try and improve the, uh, the search for this. So yeah, let's get started. So first of all what we want is we define main as always now we want to keep track of two things we need to keep track of what is the current longest chain and then we need to keep track of what number made that chain so current uh, longest chain equals zero we currently don't have one um, then we want number that produced chain, so the number that produced the longest chain, um, that's going to start with zero, we don't know what it is, so there's sorted, now we're going to need some function that takes in a number, um, so we're going to define a function called collats, now collats is going to take in a number, and what it's going to do with this number is if number um, mod 2 is equal to 0 then number equals the, um, divided by 2 now that will return float I think, I'm not certain on that, I'm going to check this in a sec um, elif number well, there's no need for an elif because it's either even or it's odd, so we're just going to say else. Uh, number equals number times 3 and then we're going to add 1. And number times 3 plus 1. Um, now I want to print number, just see what it is, then return number um, and then we're going to call collats on say 13 for our example. Now we're also going to call main. Now I expect this to only collapse it once. Uh, we're not calling it multiple times. So we're, from 13 we expect to get the answer 40. Uh, you should see this now. So yeah, we, we get 40. Now it's not making it a float, which is good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say so we've set up our rules for our collats now we need something that's going to iterate through numbers so we need um, so we're going to have number two sorry um, we'll, we'll just call it x right we're going to have x x is equal to one now we're going to say while uh, sorry, we need another variable now. So number two, a lot up to 
this is going to be in our case uh, 2 million which I think is that is it 2 million? no it's 1 million so 1 million now we're going to say while x is less than uh, number 2 collapse up to we want to uh, we want to have a while loop inside this that says while number uh, not number while so we want to redefine what we want to say here is we want to say uh, current so current number is equal to x and um, just one second Okay, so we're going to say current number is equal to x. Now, while current number um, is not equal to 1, we want to run this because when it equals 1, we know we've terminated. Um, we also want to keep track of um, current chain. So we need another chain we're currently on. Now, current chain is going to start at 1 because it's always going to start at a number. Um, yeah, that's just how I'm going to count it. Now, while current number is not equal to 1, what we want to do is we want to collat the current number. So collat um, current number. Now, collating it returns a number that we want to assign back to the current number. So current number equals collat current number. Now, once we've collated it, we need to um, realize that we've now increase the chain so current chain plus equals one now when the chain ends we need to say if current chain is longer than our current longest chain then current longest chain is equal to current chain then current chain needs to be reset to um, one and is that it? Pretty sure that's it. Then we need to iterate x because we've now um, we've done that that current number. So we need x to be increasing so that we eventually break out of this while loop. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this. We're doing this anymore. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Now I'm gonna drop this number to 100. Um, I'm also gonna after every x, I'm gonna print out. Um, x and the I don't want to do it here I want to print out on this line I want to print x and the current chain so let's run this now you see we are actually getting floats so these floats um, what I'm going to do is when I'm printing this number I'm going to instead because uh, we don't need to print that number anymore there's no need for it I'm going to say number equals um, int but just because I want everything to be int um, ints look prettier in the console so you can see the number 1 has a collapse sequence of 1 number 2 has a collapse sequence length of 2 3, 8, 4, 3 so you can see all the different chain lengths um, so if we go to 13 13 13 has a sequence length of 10 it's telling me now if we go back to this screen you see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so it's working right it's working as we expected so what we need to do now is increase this number to a million uh, so there's a million now get rid of these prints because these will slow it down and then at the end what we want to do is we want to print out the oh one sec so wh whenever we um, change this here whenever we catch a new longest chain we need to record what number produced that chain because that's the uh, the answer we want to output so number that produced chain is equal to x now at the end we want to print out the number 
uh, no, not number. We want to print out the yeah, the number that produced the chain. Uh, we want to print that. I'm also going to print out the current longest chain because it'd be interesting to see what the longest chain is. And uh, I'm going to actually drop one zero off this just to see the the runtime to see if it's actually slow or fast or what. So it seems really slow. Um, Oh, it's not too slow, it's not that bad. So, the number 77,031 produced a chain that was 351 long. Now, if I add another zero to this, I have a feeling. Um, actually, hold on, I'm going to import time. Import time. Set start time equal to time.time. And then at the end, I'm going to print out. Um, So I'm going to print the longest chain was number that produced this chain was this took seconds to find dot format then we want to pass in the current longest chain number that produced the chain and time dot time this start time and I can get rid of this line save that run that it should tell us how long it takes to find a hundred thousand um, that's up to a hundred thousand so the longest chain was 351, the number that produced this chain was 77,031, this is what these outputs were here. This took 5.6 seconds, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just double this, uh, to 200,000, and just see how long this one takes. I have a feeling this is going to be longer than like 15 seconds, I reckon it's going to be something like 20 seconds. Uh, that's not too bad actually, 11 seconds. So I'll try 500,000. I would expect this to can be 30 seconds or so. So the reason it takes so long is because when you collapse certain numbers, so for example, when you collapse 3, um, you're not just decreasing 3 all the time. 3 can go higher or lower depending on obviously. Your rules, so your rules are if it's odd, you times it by 3 plus 1. So 3 is odd, so times it by 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. So you can see from 3, um, I think our chain was like 8 or something up here. Yeah, so uh, 32 seconds, so I was about right with that. Okay, so we can probably do a million. Um, I'm going to try out a million. Should probably take a bit over a minute, but I think it should work. It's not taking too long to do this way. But yeah, the uh, the reason it's taking so long is because the collapse sequence can increase um, even from really small numbers into numbers that are actually really big. See over here, like we've got um, 71 has like 103 numbers in its chain, so even though we're only going up to in this sequence, there's actually 103 numbers involved in one's chain, so probably more like 113 for some of these. Eight. So, something you can do to improve the speed of this is you can keep track of a dictionary, uh, you can create a dictionary and keep track of the numbers you've already collapsed. So for example, in the uh, the example given for 13 over here, we know that if we did 13, um, we find out the answer to 40, 20 um, and 16. So if we're doing in like ascending order, we do 1, we do 2, then we do 3 somewhere. Um, then we do 4, we do so on so on. 
So once we do 5, 5 would give us the answer for 8, so we wouldn't actually have to collapse 8 if we kept track of it, because we'd know we'd already done 8 at some point in a different chain, if that makes sense. So because we'd know we'd already done 8, um, we'd have to skip doing 8, that'd save us processing time. Then when we go up to 13, uh, or 10 even, 10 could mean we can skip 16, 13 means we can skip 40, 20, um, and 16 so you can see sometimes you can skip numbers because you've already done them in a previous chain so my plan is in the next video um, the improvement over this to keep track of a dictionary and add these to dictionaries with their corresponding chain lengths and hopefully improve speed that way um, I guess we'll see when I get there so you can see this has actually taken a really long time Not sure how long this has been running, but definitely taking a while. There we go. So the longest chain was 525. The number that produced it was 837,000. This took 68 seconds. So if we look at the answer, 837,799. So we, we did get the answer right. This definitely works. Um, so if all you're looking for is the answer, this video is for you. Um, there's definitely improvements, like I said, with the dictionary. I'm going to be going through these in the next video, though. This is going to be it for this video. Um, i trying to think of other improvements we could make. I'll have a think between now and then, but I think this dictionary is probably going to be the, uh, the way we need to do this. So, yeah, I will see you in the next video. If you liked it, like the video. If you want to see more, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.